Hello everyone. My name is Onorata Prabhairidi and I am a PhD student at North Carolina State University. The co-authors of this paper I'm going to present today are Onik Saha, Onik Sinha Iftiazadabir, Dr. Nova Ahmed and Dr. Shami Mahmud. For the next 10 minutes or so, on their behalf, I'll be very glad to share our observations, findings and suggestions regarding the educational settings for the kids with autism in Bangladesh and how their parents view this journey. We will also start a discussion on how, as computer scientists, we can make a positive impact on the development of these kids as well as facilitate their parents and teachers so that they can help them more, braving against the uncooperative society. These are roughly the points of motivation for us to make sure that we all are on the same page. ASD or simply autism refers to a wide range of neurological developmental conditions that mostly affect social and communicative skills. It surfaces during the early years in a person's life, so intervention with the kids is suggested to be practiced by the researchers. Bangladesh is a developing country in Southeast Asia with a staggering population, deep financial constraints, and saddening social awareness. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University in Bangladesh confirmed that almost two in 1,000 children have been suffering from ASD in Bangladesh, wherein the urban prevalence is higher than the rural areas. It might be lesser than that it is in United States today, one in 54 children that is, because due to lack of awareness about ASD, parents do not frequent psychiatrists or psychologists or other experts for diagnosis purposes. In fact, ASD is a relatively new term in Bangladesh and only a handful of specialized schools are running. However, the number is not enough to accommodate the kids and also there is a scarcity of reliable and customized education materials for the kids. Social stigma prevents open mixing between autistic and neurotypical kids, making the parents of autistic kids very helpless. It should be mentioned that there exists segregation between mainstream and specialized schools, and we are talking about the autistic kids that attend the special schools. Earlier, we did research on special school teachers, and this research being a follow-up to that helped us dig deeper into the parents' mindset and whether they feel technology can help them provide a better experience for their kids. So, our research objective focuses on the intersection of these three circles, where we believe that children are supported by the caregivers, that is their parents. We want to investigate how do the parents in Bangladesh view the current educational system for the children with ASD, and how ICT intervene, how intervention in the context of Bangladesh can provide the best possible solution to existing concerns. Talking about methodology, we collected 10 participants through snowball sampling and we could do a semi-structured interview with 10 of them. So we found that the annual household in income for at least six of those participants of the families was more than 600k taka. Here one US dollar is roughly equivalent to 85 takas. Then we found that most of them are working professionals and only three of them out of 10 were stay-at-home parents and they were aged between 38 and 64 years, and six of them were females, which means that they were mothers of the autistic kids. And then they were mostly settled. All of them were actually settled um, in Dhaka, which is the capital city of Bangladesh and the hub of all sorts of facilities in the country. And uh, almost all of them had higher uh, educational degrees, including one who had a PhD degree. And except one, all of them has one neurotypical child um, each. And uh, based on all the demographics, we um, did a semi-structured interview with them. And uh, the interviews lasted four to six minutes on average. And uh, uh, we had 33 questions to ask them. So we asked them about their opinions on the teaching method of the school and what kind of information they receive about the school activities and the development of their child with autism. We delve deeper to know how they are informed, how frequently and how much they know about the things that the teachers teach and how they teach them at school. Finally, we wanted to know more about the kind of technologies they think can be used to make communication between them and the teachers effective. 
As a part of the post interview analysis, we did qualitative coding using Atlas TI and broke the transcriptions down to 51 codes to finally get the high level themes. And the themes constituted the major findings. So we found that the parents hold mixed reviews about the teachers. They have this immense appreciation for helping them empower their kids while no one gets their back in the context of Bangladesh. They could also empathize with the teachers as they're ill paid with a huge workload. For example, many special schools take care of the improvement of the kids fine motor activities, as you can see from the picture, and the parents follow these at home. However, they criticize the lack of depth of knowledge and expertise in them. They were clearly not satisfied with the less trained teachers as they believed the teachers would be the ones to guide them. They expressed their frustration by comparing the difference between their expectations from school and what they get. In light of that, we found out an immense scarcity of resources and logistics in regard to autism education in Bangladesh. Parents learn the ways of autism for the sake of children via different websites according to the parents themselves. However, the teachers perceive this only as a job. According to the parents, the school administration also does not put much effort into training them. On top of that, there are financial constraints that bar everyone concerned to proceed with assistance to these kids. As you can see from the picture, all these picture cards might not be interesting or relevant to all the kids. However, years after years, in most cases, these are the only tools of imparting education to these kids. Such an absence makes the gap between the teachers and the parents bigger. Parents mention that their voices are not heard enough. This creates misunderstanding between them, which gets nuanced with the lack of communication and trust. Sometimes the lesson is taught differently at home and at school. A good number of parents voted for technology as a mode of help to strengthen their mode of interaction for the betterment of the kids. In a nutshell, we observed a mixed reaction among the parents regarding teaching staff, which is because of the lack of experience of the teachers, the absence of the convention to engage parents in their kids' education plan, and a possible paucity of ICT intervention. Typically in Bangladesh, parents in general do not participate in the kids' educational processes and like to believe that the teachers would be there to take care of everything. However, in the context of autistic kids, the parents want to collaborate with the teachers, which is a focal point of our discussions. So, as we reported, lack of coherence leads to develop developmental regression. There is almost no common or specific guideline for the caregivers. This leaves no standard rule regarding teaching the kids. Hence, by the Convention of Bangladesh, this is a one-way communication from teachers to parents. Teachers are expected to execute a lot more, even though their parents want to be a part of the system. This eventually removes the focus from the kids. There is a lack of availability of training and teaching materials and a lack of confidence due to inadequate qualifications, which hamper the progress. As you can see, the classrooms are crammed with students, each of them preferring to do different things. But due to the lack of materials to aid them and the lack of experiences to enable them, the kids face infrastructural obstacles to progress in Bangladesh. So as we can see, gratitude and dissatisfaction coexist in the parents of Bangladesh. Such opposing emotions for the same cause are common for many other social relationships, according to cognitive dissonance theory, where different cognitive reactions coexist. On the one hand, they are tensed about the ability to rely on schools and on the other hand, they feel hopeful around the teachers and the fellow parents only, as society doesn't provide them a favorable condition yet. In fact, the suggestion that came from the parents was about creating a platform where all sorts of suggestions and feedback will be centrally available via doctors, psychologists, therapists, psychiatrists, and other expert professionals. With the rise in tech-savvy people in Bangladesh, ICT-based Design implication can be an organic solution to this problem of the parent teacher blame game. We suggested keeping track of the tasks, activities, and progress to ensure transparency at both ends and enhance sensibility in sharing with each other. Such facilities will make the flow of communication between them a spontaneous one. Please read our paper for more suggestions we made based on other findings and discussions. Finally, we realized 
that technology is not enough to address such a sensitive issue. However, we identify the inherent intricacies in the parents-teacher relationship in the context of special schools in Bangladesh, which is very complex. We then put forward some recommendations accordingly and open the avenue for fellow researchers. In the end, as computer scientists, we can do something where ICT takes a vital role. It can include, but is certainly not limited to, building an online forum for parents, implementing robust systems for teachers and parents, where the kids with autism will be at the focal point. Take home messages will be how parents of autistic kids in Bangladesh feel helpless without expert teaching staff to aid their kids' development and how social stigma plays an instrumental role in misunderstanding the parents. ICT can heavily contribute to creating a conducive and non-judgmental environment via coherent education plans. Moreover, connecting parents and teachers in a more inclusive manner can be achieved by exercising ICT knowledge for smooth communication and better development for the kids. Here are some of the references from our paper. Thank you for your patience.